Hello everyone. This video is basically an overview of the concepts that we are going to learn in this particular module whose name is structure of the atom. Throughout this module, we will be answering a few exciting questions which once upon a time were the toughest questions to correctly answer. So let us have a look at those questions one by one. The first question was are atoms really indivisible as Dalton has said? And are there smaller particles inside an atom? The answer is no. The atom is not indivisible. In fact, it is made up of smaller particles which are known as the subatomic particles. Now these subatomic particles are of three kinds. That is electrons, protons and neutrons. Now electrons are negatively charged. Protons are positively charged and the neutrons have no charge or we can say that neutrons are electrically neutral. Now that we know that there are three particles inside an atom, the usual question that comes into picture is that how are these subatomic particles distributed or arranged within an atom? And to answer these questions, there were several models which were put forth by different scientists based on the results of their experiments. And among those models, the first one was the Thomson's atomic model, which looked something like this. The arrangement of positive and negative charges were like this. Now this model was also called as the plum pudding model. But this model was not accepted because of some drawbacks. After a few years, a person named Ernest Rutherford discovered what is called as the atomic nucleus and gave his own atomic model which is named as Rutherford's nuclear model. Now this model looked something like this. It had a nucleus at the center and the electrons were simply revolving around the nucleus in circular orbits. But this model also had a particular drawback which was unavoidable even though it was accepted. Now this drawback was addressed by another scientist whose name was Niels Bohr with his atomic model. Now among all these three models, this Bohr's atomic model was the most accepted one. Now Dalton has proposed it's one of his postulates that atoms combine to form molecules. But why do they do that? There must be a reason, right? And the answer is to attain what is called as stability. When atoms combine to form molecules, they become stable. And that's the reason why they combine with each other to form molecules. Now some atoms are very good at combining with each other. But there are some other atoms which are not so good at it. Now this combining capacity of an atom is measured in terms of valency. We will learn about this valency in detail in our upcoming videos. Now Dalton has said that atoms of a particular element are exactly identical to each other and the atoms of different elements are different from each other. But what makes the atom of one element different from the other was not stated by Dalton. And later on it was found by the scientists that it is the atomic number and the mass number which make the atoms of different elements different from each other. Now we will learn about the atomic number and mass number in our upcoming videos in detail. Now let's move on to our next question. That is do the atoms of a particular element have the same exact mass? The answer is no. There are certain elements for which they may not have the same exact mass for all the atoms. And those atoms of a particular element with different masses are termed as isotopes. Now there is another possibility that is can two atoms of different elements have the exact equal mass? The answer is yes. There are certain elements whose atoms may have the exact mass even if they belong to different elements. Now these set of atoms of different elements with equal masses are termed as isobars. So about isotopes and isobars we will be learning in detail in our upcoming videos. So this was all about the concepts that we are going to learn in this module. 
सो स्टे ट्यून एंड कीप वॉचिंग थैंक यू